Okay, um, as Seth said, I'm going to talk about the automotive industry, how it's changing, and how the standards are going to help it change and reach the next levels. What we're seeing in the automotive industry is, is a very much, it's going through a transformation at the moment. Um, the cars in the 60s and the 70s were all mechanical, it was all about the carburetor and the radiator and the wheels and things like that. Um, but then it started changing, then you started seeing a lot more uh, software entering the car, you started seeing the car become more electronic, you saw the fuel injection, you saw the gearboxes changing, and now we're starting to see a lot more electronics come into the car and software come into the car. This is affecting things, this is increasing, giving new features, such as telematics, GPRS, internet access, and even new business cases, which is such as the insurance that is dedicated, which is driven by who's driving the car, when it's being driven, and so on. So we're seeing a big change in the focus of the car from being mechanical to being software driven. At the um, CES just in January, the Kia uh, showed a car with, it was open, cut open, it, had, it was showing the different software in the car. Now, it's getting more and more complicated. We're looking at mobile phones, you've got one piece of hardware, one piece of one operating system. In the car, you've got many different operating systems, such as Android, QNX, Linux, AutoSign, and Geneva. You've got different proto network protocols. You've got Bluetooth, Canvas, Cellular. You've also got many different use cases. So the complexity of the car is more than the mobile phone. The mobile phone, which is kind of what's been driving the OMA DM for the past 10 years, had one, you know, a device with a single piece of hardware, a single operating system using a single uh, network topology to connect to the network. The cars are far more complex than that, and the automotive industry is realizing that. Software is very good for the automotive industry because it's driving innovation. So we talked a little bit about the different uh, use cases and this, the features, the services, and even the changes in the, in the, in the uh, insurance industry that's coming around it. So it's driving innovation, and it's even reaching points where the, the uh, software-driven electronics are reaching 40% of the bill of materials in the car. So it's becoming a major part of the cars we drive today. This obviously is driving the amount of lines of code. We are seeing uh, some of the, the people say that the fighter jets have about three to five million lines of code, whereas a car can be reaching up to 100 million lines of code. So very, very complex, we were saying. And according to standard industry for industry standards for developments, lines of code equals errors. This needs to be, it needs to be handled. Also, additional code creates um, security issues in the cars. The current answer to that are recalls. We're hearing a lot about recalls today. Cars are being brought back to the, uh, to the manufacturers, not to have the brakes fixed, but to have the software fixed, to have the, soft, the fuel injection software, maybe the software that's managing the brakes, but it's all being brought back to the dealers to have software fixes. And recalls, as soon as you issue a recall, the price of the stock price of the car manufacturer drops on the spot, and it generates a lot of bad press and a lot of bad attention. Elon Musk, who is the CEO of Tesla, recently tweaked, the word recall needs to be recalled. So let me just play this one for you. Let me see how I do that. Anyway, do I play the video here? Nobody in the technical side? The word there recall you. needs to be recalled. What do you mean by that? What prompted that? I think that in this case, uh, recall is not the right word to use because uh, the, the remedy is actually an over-the-air software update, and th that actually took place last month. There's no need to bring the car in, and so in this case, I think uh, recall is probably the wrong word. This is Elon Musk. Now, he's, those of you who know Tesla, this is a, a car manufacturer based out of the Sunnyvale, out of the Valley, as opposed to Detroit, and they are completely disruptive to the industry. They're not using the regular, the regular industry, if you will, the Detroit industry. They're doing things differently. And he's pointing to something. He's got a lot of software. They're, uh, they're in vehicle infotainment. The, the screen in the middle of the car is about a 17-inch touchscreen. Their whole car is built different. The way they go to market is built different. And the way they maintain their cars is different. They're not recalling cars to fix software. They're doing over-the-air software updates. And this is shaking up the industry. So here is the CEO of Tesla who's saying, when I do a firmware update to fix the software, which we've, we've showed is becoming a bigger and bigger part of the car, don't call it a recall. Because then my stock goes down and my investors get pissed off. There's no reason for that. 
We're improving the car. We're making the car continuously better by adding new features, by improving the features that are already on the car, and we're doing that while the car is in the user's hands. We're doing it while it's in their home. We're using firmware over the air updates. So he's leading the charge, if you will, and the other people are going to be following. Where can these software updates happen? So he was talking about doing it at the home, I guess. But there's many more parts in the software, in the life cycle of the car, in the, uh, the, the, the production of the car, where software updates can be important. You look at the, the production line. In the car, uh, lots of the pieces are manufactured by third-party vendors. By the time they're shipped to the manufacturer and installed in the car, the software has to be updated. The time, that so the time on the production line that is allocated to software updates is limited. And any car which is not finished off a software update by the time that window on the production line is finished gets taken off the production line. And this is drop, the drop in price straight away. So they have to adhere to the amount of time that's on the production line. It's a key value for the manufacturers. Post-production, after a car's developed, oh, sorry, developed, we're talking about a car like it's a software device. After it's, and it is. After it's developed, after it's been manufactured, it gets shipped around the world, and it can be months before it actually gets handed to the, the person who's bought it. In that period of time as well, the software is updated. The vendors are updating their software, they're finding problems. Think cars that are being recalled are being updated. At the moment, they send people on the, on the lots, opening each car, starting them, and updating them one by one. That needs to stop. They can be made much more efficient by doing it over the air. The dealership. When you go to a dealer today, you've got the people with the grease and the oil on their hands, and you're telling them to become computer engineers and start checking the car, connecting it to a network, figuring out what software there, and updating it. It's not natural for them, and there's no need to do it. Because to get them to do it, you need to train them. It's just not what they're naturally inclined to do. The other way of doing it is having the soft, they connect the cable, and it gets updated, over, updated from the center. So maybe it won't be over the air but it's still centralized, remote updating of software in the cars. A lot of the enterprise um, en cars are used in enterprises for, uh, for the police, for, for um, uh, trucking and for delivery. And often we'll see the same cars used for police force or for, for first responders, but it's also sold commercially. A lot of the time there's a different configuration there. So again, being able to manage the different configurations and managing it remotely has a lot of benefits. And of course, Elon Musk himself mentioned how in the future, well, today with Tesla in the future with the rest of the cars, it can be also updated in the house. So we're going to see a lot of efficiencies coming along when it comes to managing software. And you have to have that because taking the current uh, maintenance plans and, and techniques used for the hardware of the car and trying to apply it on the software just won't work. There has to be a different approach to it. So the main challenge is how do the car manufacturers manage a separate software versions? Okay? And the second one is how they do it in, a flexible way, in, a, in an efficient way. When you look at hardware, you have a, a device, a piece. You have a set of brakes, you have a tire, you have a steering wheel. When you look at software, you've got different versions of software, different configurations of software. If they try and take the automotive industry, try and take the existing um, part management systems they have and manage software with it, it's going to fail. What they're understanding is the parts need to be managed separately from the software. The software can be managed where, with a system that manages the dependencies between software, the versioning of software, the configuration of software. They've got two choices. They can either go and invent, reinvent the wheel, or they can look at our industry, at the mobile industry, and see and recognize that already is a standard which completely understands how to do that. So OMODM's software component management object, SCOMO, does exactly that. It understands how it can get inventory from a device, and I met a car manufacturer this week who was calling his car a device. So we can get the inventory from the device, from the car, what software is there and which versions. It can update versioning of software. It can bear, do balance between um, dependency between different parts of software. It can create a single pack, a download package to update different, different types of software in the car. And very importantly, the standard is decoupled from the actual update technology itself. So it still leaves room for the different manufacturers of the ve different vendors of the parts to implement their own or, or somebody else's update technology where the standard is supporting any of those. The standard will send the instruction, give me information, perform an action, and then the actual action itself will be done by somebody else. And this standard creates a great uh, opportunity for interoperability, which is what standards are all about. The people who are supporting this and really pushing this are the operators. 
So the operators who have been trying to find additional revenue generation opportunities are saying, how can we leverage our existing infrastructure in OMDM servers that we're using for managing phones to managing other devices? So AT&T have uh, got their direct drive where they're trying to show additional devices and different cars that can be managed over their network. And all of these operators you see here have invested heavily in OMDM, and they're all coming out with initiatives now on how they can manage the Internet of Things using maybe lightweight M2M and also into, uh, managing cars. What we are suggesting, and it's being widely received, is that the OMDM SCOMO is the right protocol that can be used to manage the different components in the car, and this is exactly, and they, they are pushing it as well. So everyone benefits from over their updates using the standards. The OEM benefits because they can get efficiencies in production and reduce the recalls. The car dealership may have, gets benefits because they're saving time and money. When the car comes in, it's already updated. They just have to perform the test that the update has gone, has gone well. The, um, the operator are benefiting because they're using their existing uh, solutions, their existing systems to manage additional types of devices. And the consumer is benefiting because their car is getting continuously better throughout the life cycle, which is far more than the one and a half years of a phone. It's more like 10 to 15 years of a car. So what we're demonstrating over here today, if you'd like to come and see it, is there are a software, a SCOMO, OMADM SCOMO-based server sitting on the AT&T cloud, connecting to an OMADM uh, client sitting on the head unit of a car. And that head unit is then, that's up, the DM client is uh, triggering an update installer that can update the firmware of the head unit, applications on the IVI, and the firmware of the ECU, the small electronic control units that are connected over the internal car area network bus, the CAN bus. So I'm over there, come and have a look. Thank you.